Cool evening, ladies and... Oh wait, Ghoul goes twice into that pun. Never mind. Hey everyone, it's me Aaron. And I'm Michelle. And this is the first of our post Shriekout reactions. 31 days of scary movie reviews. Or scary other thing. Yeah, like reviews. Halloween spooky yeah. related stuff. It doesn't always have to be scary. I Well, yeah, spooky theme supernatural stuff. Yeah. That Castlevania show on Netflix. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but anyway, yes, it's part of our month-long Halloween celebration. For anybody who has not been with us in the years before, every single year, we do a video a day celebrating Halloween. By every single year, I mean last year we did that. And now it's going to be a regular thing. But, Fingers yes. Fingers crossed. <laughs> man, there is a curse. Again, for anybody who has not followed us in the years before, there is a curse with Thorgy Ween where every single year something goes wrong. I'm going to let you guys in on a little behind the scenes thing. Hopefully, we just started a few hours before this. We had the opening ceremony for Thorgy Ween, which was a skit that I had taken all this time to get filmed. What you witnessed was the second time that we filmed that skit because the first time we filmed that skit, I got home after renting the space and paying the actor and then I plugged in my camera and I listened to the audio and the audio was <laughs> The mic broke on us. Yeah, so we had to get, we had to get a brand new mic. <laughs> yeah, man, I keep joking about how Thorgy Ween is cursed. Woo! That might have been like the scientific evidence I needed to prove that. Uh, but yes, we are starting off with The Conjuring. Why? Because it's on Netflix. But also because I keep thinking about it, it's like, man, they have built an entire cinematic universe now around this film. It's really the only horror cinematic universe we have now because those Universal Monster ones just flopped and tanked and were, oh, god awful. <laughs> so, you know what? This really is kind of defining a whole generation of horror movie I fans. I guess, like, do the crossover horror movies count like Freddy vs. Jason or nah? That was a decade ago, huh? <laughs> that was more than a decade ago. That was like early 2000s. <laughs> that doesn't count, no. Alrighty. Yeah, no. There aren't even Freddy or Jason movies anymore. <laughs> They're kind of done. <laughs> uh, so yeah, these Conjuring films really are what big horror movie fans who are coming up now, this is their Freddy and Jason. This is the stuff that they're being raised on. This is for them what those franchises were for people growing up in the 80s. So I figured, you know what, we really should go ahead and finally talk about The Conjuring. Uh, so I will go ahead and say, I saw this in theaters, but you did not. No. You saw the second one though, mm -hmm. uh, but you never saw the first one. I really loved The First Conjuring. It's not a very original story. It's totally just the Amityville horror all over again, except that the Warrens show up, which in the real world, the Warrens did show up at the actual Amityville house, and that's kind of where the Warrens became famous. Uh, so even though this is supposed to be based on a separate, not the Amityville house case that they went on, it is still basically the same thing. Well, it's weird that the Warrens have gone to multiple houses and had very similar experiences there. It's almost like they just read this shit from a script. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get into my thoughts on the Warrens on this <laughs> one as well. Uh, I teased that back when we talked about that Nun movie. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get out some of my thoughts about the Warrens on this one. Um, but yeah, this film, it's not very original. It is just a haunted house. But damn, it's smart with the scares. It doesn't take too long to set anything up. It doesn't shove it all in your face with giant jump scares. A ton of the scares in here are actually built up insanely well. Like when we were watching it again, I forgot all the <laughs> scares. Those actually really freaked me out the first time that I saw this in theaters. Uh, like that scene where the mom is going around blindfolded because she's playing hide and seek and they're playing a special version of hide and seek where you have to wear a blindfold so you can't see, but you can ask the other person to clap so you know where they are. That is a brilliant setup for a haunted house film. Man, I don't know if that's an actual way to play hide and seek, but if it is... It's like some sort of like combination of hide and seek and blind man's bluff or, or oh, Marco yeah, Polo right. or I don't know, kind of one like of that, those yeah. kind of games. It kind of is, yeah, you're right. <laughs> 
But it's like, man, that is actually a brilliant way to set up the scares in there. This really is just the Marco Polo of horror films. <laughs> It's kind of like when a producer is just like, I want to turn this thing into a movie. That doesn't make any sense. Turn it into a movie already. You're asking us to turn Marco Polo and not the actual guy, but the game into a, <laughs> okay, fine, boss, just don't fire us. Uh, yeah, the scene in which she walks into that room and the doors on the dresser just open up and just the hands come out. Man, that really creeped me out. But even more, when the clapping comes back, when she is trapped in the cellar, and you just see the hands come out from the shadows behind her. I flipped the fudge out in the theater when I saw that. And again, I think it's because it's not a jump scare. They set that stuff up. They took their time. They set up the whole clapping thing. They give you a long enough pause to let the suspense build of like, oh shoot, I know something's coming, but from where? And it wasn't just jumping in your face screaming. It was like, nope. It was a very like just slow uh, burn going into those scenes. Uh, also, I really dig the family in here. Uh, they are just, again, generic 1970s family. Uh, I can't remember who played the dad, but he's literally a guy who we were talking about, like, a couple months ago, and I said, that dude should just play dads in 70s films. <laughs> and I forgot he was in this movie, and I was like, oh yeah, shoot. Yeah, he really should just play dads in 70s films. Um, so yeah, I dig the family. Uh, I... Also really enjoy that they kind of set up this idea that they know something is going on in the house, but they set up like, yeah, they can't just like leave the house. They've sunk all their money into this thing, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of times whenever people go, well, why don't you just leave the haunted house? It's like, how haunted is it? It's because, it's you know, this is kind of an expensive place and I don't have the money for any of this other stuff. And there does eventually come that point in which they do leave and go to a hotel and it kind of does answer that question of like, no, 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 it's it's following you. It's going wherever you are. So you might as well just stay in the big old house that you already paid for. Um, trying to think. I also really dig. I don't want to say I dig the Warrens. I dug these. <laughs> I dig these characters that are meant to be loosely inspired <laughs> by the Warrens. I really like them because they were very smart in here to show that these characters that are loosely based on the Warrens <laughs> are not con artists in this film. Because there's that moment which they're like, oh yeah, we, th we think we have a ghost in our house. And they're investigating it. And it's like, no, you hear this wooey noise? And he just steps down the woods like, yeah, when your pipes get cold in the winter, they expand a little bit, they press up against the wood, that creates that sound. Yeah, don't worry, nine out of 10 times, it's not an actual haunting. And it's like, well, I really like these guys. <laughs> but man, that is my one okay let's go ahead and talk about that yeah let's uh, finally address the elephant in the room <laughs> <laughs> I love like paranormal shit I am very much into all that stuff I will admit real talk though I don't really believe in ghosts though I believe in the possibility of ghosts which what I mean when I say that is that you know gun to my head do you believe in ghosts no I don't think ghosts actually exist but if you came to me and I was like, no, 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 here's some actual scientific evidence on this. Like, oh, shoot, well, all right, there you go, that proves it. Uh, the way that I've always described it is, do you believe that there are ghosts in that haunted ha in that haunted looking house? No, I do not. What do you say in that haunted looking house? Go fuck yourself. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, I grew up in an old ass creaky house. And yeah, I don't think there are ghosts in there, but I, at the same time, I fully realize that if I was walking through that house at night one night, and I saw a door slowly open on its own, stop, and then go back slowly the other direction, there would be an Aaron-shaped hole in that wall. Like, I wouldn't even ask questions. So, I can't 100% say that I don't believe in ghosts, because that lizard brain is still there. Like, yeah, you kind of do, man. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I am open to the idea that ghosts exist. But... Man, the Warrens are just con artists in the real world. <laughs> like, flat out, like, and not like, oh, yeah, well, I don't like the stuff that they've done, so I'm going to say the cause. No, it has been proven. Like, I have always said, they need to make a movie about the Amityville horror. And I don't mean the stories of the Amityville horror. I mean, I need, like, an actual movie about what really went down. Because it is a fascinating story. What happened with the Amityville house? Yes. The actual Amityville house, it involves mob ties, it involves like 
a heroin addicted incest relationship son who just <laughs> killed the entire family. And then it involves like a family that was massively in debt teaming up with the Warrens to create a massive scam that just got the entire country talking about Honestly, him. that sounds like way more interesting than just like yes! a bunch of ghost hunters. Like, Dude, I want to <laughs> see that. Make it like a comedy. Get like Seth Rogen to play one, of the, <laughs> play the Warren guy. I can't remember, Ed, Ed Warren. Ed and Lorraine, I think their names are. Mm -hmm. The dog's down here. That's what we're yes. playing, by the way. Yeah. Uh, no ghost, only dogs. Yes. Ghost dog. Yay! <laughs> I'm Peach. Uh, but yeah, I have always said, no, that is a way more fascinating story. Especially when you really look into it and it's like, man, the uh, people living in that house, the lies they came up with for the stuff that was haunting them, it doesn't match reality <laughs> at all. Like, to the point which it's just massive incompetence. Like to the point which they said, oh yeah, on this night we went outside and we saw hoof prints from the demon in the snow. It did not snow on the night in which they said that they found that. <laughs> it had not snowed in weeks in which they said that they saw that. And I was like, how are you so fucking stupid that you would screw something like that up? And yet the entire country was like, ooh, hoof prints in the snow. I was like, that's a movie there. Let's make it kind of like the producers, except, inst except instead of a Broadway play, that they just keep falling ass backwards into success on. It's a national, like, paranormal scandal. Like, that's the movie I want to see. <laughs> I think that would be genius. Uh, but yeah, so the Warrens, it is so proven that they just scam, like, people on this stuff. It is insane, the, the links they go to on this stuff. Uh, oh, my favorite part of the, um, the Amityville case is that there's part of the story at which they say that a priest was called in there the priest came in, he then like immediately left and said, don't, no, no one go inside this house. And apparently that night when he was driving home, his brakes got cut. That priest kept saying, no, it happened exactly like that. It happened exactly like that until he was called into court on this issue and he had to put his hand on the Bible mm -hmm. and swear that it was actually true. And they went, no, it was all a lie. And I just, that part... <laughs> I love that part of the story because just think about it. It's like, this is a guy who swore his life to God and then he sold out God in a second for all the sweet cash that was going to come his way <laughs> to be part of this. But the moment in which he was on trial and that guy was holding out the Bible, was like, do you swear to God? And the priest was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, man, that guy had a character arc on a dime. That is a part of a movie I want to see. Anyway, I'm pitching a whole other film that I want to see. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about the actual movie. The actual movie, The Conjuring. Uh, I've been talking about my feelings towards this. I think it takes a great time setting up slow burns. I think all the characters in here are really good. I really also like the assistance that the Warrens have. Mm -hmm. uh, like that moment in which their like, camera guy like goes running into the house to try and save something. Like, I instantly like this guy. And I like that they have the sheriff in there because like, no, we want to make sure that this all looks like it's on the up and up here, everybody. And the sheriff is like, no, I don't believe any of this. And then he very quickly <laughs> starts believing it. That guy has a great turnaround. Uh, so yeah, I like all the characters. I think the scares, they don't like, you know, they're basic, but they set them up incredibly well. Uh, there are a few little weird parts in here where they do kind of like uh, reference stuff that it almost makes you stop and go, did you already have a cinematic universe in mind when you were doing this? Because <laughs> when you look at it, the first, because when you know that it's all part of a cinematic universe, it makes sense. But when you like stop and watch it the first time and think, oh yeah, this was their first thing. It's like, that's kind of a weird detail just bring up out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Like the whole like Lorraine like got attacked during an exorcism. Uh, like it pays off with the exorcism they have to yeah. do towards the end. But they set it up in a way that's like, you definitely plan to revisit this at some point in time. <laughs> uh, although I will say, I love their museum that they have in there. Uh, which apparently is a real thing. The Warrens actually do have a museum that you can go and visit. Uh, which, even though I know they're massive scam artists and I know no material, I do kind of want to go and visit that museum at some point in time. Um... Man, I listen to a podcast called the Chilluminati Podcast, and it's all about uh, paranormal stuff. There is some crazy ass, like, paranormal haunted objects out there mm. in the world that I, mm, again, I got that slight, like, lizard brain in the back of my mind. It's like, are you fucking stupid? Why do you want to, like, take a chance on this? Yeah. But there is another part of me that's just like, no, I know it's not real, but it'd be cool to see, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, but 
Again, I'm talking about this from the point of view of someone who already saw this the first time. I will say second time seeing it wasn't as big for me as the first time. That's how a lot of horror films are. Yeah. You can't really be scared the same way twice. Uh, but what did you think seeing this for the first time? I thought it was okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's like, I didn't, I didn't, um, I don't think I was, like, into it as much, like, but maybe, like, if I saw it in the theaters, like, with you, I, I might have... that might also be part of it. I think yeah. one of the reasons I didn't get into it as much here is because, you know, it's not dark and spooky rooms. No. You're not hearing, like... It's kind of like when you see a comedy and everybody around you is laughing. Yeah. It makes you think the comedy is funnier. When everybody around you is getting very tense and you can just sense that, it does kind of build that up as well. Yeah, also because, like, I think because I already saw, like, the other movies of the franchise. That's true. Yeah. So it's like... Oh, this is very prequely. This is very basic. It's setting up the everything for the multi, the uh, multi universe <laughs> cinematic, cinematic universe. universe thing. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> the Conjuring multiverse. <laughs> the Warrens have to fight the evil Warrens, <laughs> which are the ones from our reality. <laughs> <laughs> oh <Jesus>. no! <laughs> oh man. I'm glad they're not bitter people. Uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, um, but it's like another thing is like I didn't really care for the family that much. The way really they now, like, okay. I don't know. Maybe it's just because like I don't really care about the seventies that much. It's like why do you have so many goddamn kids? Like, uh, <laughs> man, why? <laughs> millennials react to horror films. <laughs> You wow. Have, <laughs> they didn't, and honestly, like, movie-wise, like, Peach, Peach, you are being such a fuss butt. <laughs> I can't even have a dog, let alone children. <laughs> Man, anytime that I see, like, we're getting to a point in which, we're getting to a point in which a lot of the YouTubers and Twitch streamers that we follow are starting to have kids, and I keep looking at them like, how are you doing that? How do you have a career that involves you being on camera live? Jeez, Peach, you already went for a walk. Where did all this energy come from? I want to be on camera. You are on camera. More camera. Come here. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. All right. But, like, also, like, because they were, like, doing, they were playing that game in the house. It's like, that's a, hmm, let's see. Walking around blindfolded, possibly falling down stairs. Were those giant stairs there? Yeah, and it was, like, an old worn down house is like that's really fucking dangerous but at the same time it's the 70s nobody gave a shit about the safety of <laughs> the kids You're right. no one gave a shit about true. safety no one cared how many kids you had like, I'm amazed <laughs> no one was smoking in this film <laughs> including the kids uh, but it's like the kids it's like the older kids didn't really have a purpose it was always you're the, right it was the younger kids that like were affected most by like the demons and ghosts that's and totally stuff. true so yeah. it's like they could have like easily just cut out the older kids and they would have like saved a lot of time i think that's very true actually you're right yeah uh like i mean at the end of the film you see the actual family so i guess they want to match it one for one i like, guess I mean, so speaking in terms of storyline you're right the adult kids have like no purpose in this yeah story. the older kids i yeah. never even really thought of it that way yeah uh, yeah, I guess the reason why I like the family is I like the mom and I like the dad. Yeah. I, the kids are there just to get, just to be in danger. Yeah. The thing that you have to be concerned about. It's like, I'm just thinking about like the movie Poltergeist and it's like, I actually mm. like that family. Like that, that's a good amount of kids. They all like serve their purpose and everything. The, the parents actually care about what's going on and everything. It's like. This totally <laughs> does have a Poltergeist feel to it as well. It's not just Amityville Horror, but yeah. you can totally get a sense of Poltergeist in there. Uh, so yeah, uh, like that is one of the problems I have with the film is that man it is derivative of a lot of other movies out there. Uh, the Conjuring films did get way more original as they went along, but even still, I feel like The Nun is their most original film, but it's also probably their second worst film, <laughs> which to me just so which just shows yeah, man, sometimes execution just goes a long way, and that to me is what really works in this film because. Yeah, the family, uh, like, I understand your complaints with them. Yeah. Uh, Peach, what is it? Are there ghosts? Are there spooky ghosts? <laughs> but okay, so any final thoughts on this thing before we give our score? Um, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, first time that I watched this, I would have given this, like, an 8.5. But second time watching it at home, I'm coming down to a 7. I yeah. still think it is good. Like, to me, 
Uh, five is, nah, right in the middle. Six is, it's all right. Seven is good. Yeah, I think maybe seven, six and a half for me. Six and a half, yeah. okay, yeah. Like slightly, like above average, you'd yeah. say. Okay then, uh, but yeah, that's it. That is our first video in the post Shriek Out reactions. We have 30 more of these to do. <laughs> and for this first week, which luckily this October, it actually is matching up with like actual weeks. So it's <laughs> making it real easy for me. Uh, this first week, it's just random movies, whatever we wanted to watch. But after that, we are going to be doing theme weeks. So make sure that you check out the upcoming theme weeks as well. And remember, we're not just doing post shriek out reactions. We're doing haunted, spooky versions of all the regular shows here on this channel, including Comic Class, including Game Room. So if you guys want to see all of that, make sure that you click that subscribe button and share these videos around the web. It's the best way to help our channel grow. And you can always follow me for future updates on Thor Ween at twitter.com slash Professor Thorgy. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Come back next time. Bye. Bye.